Hey guys, so we are back for another round of Breathe Aloud. So this is our fifth day, but our fourth chapter. And this one is called The Land of Stories. So if, remem if you remember when we last left off, the book actually started um, to kind of vibrate and they, uh, Alex said it was unmistakably glowing. So we're gonna take off from there. Chapter four, The Land of Stories. Alex had begun acting strange all week. Connor had noticed right away because she wasn't as talkative and upbeat as she usually was. Instead, she was very quiet and looked like she was deep in a, st in a deep state of confusion. Do we know why she's maybe acting a little bit different than normal? I think we have some insider information, me and the reader, don't we? Mm -hmm. When they ate breakfast, she barely acknowledged it when her brother said, Good morning. During school, she stopped raising her hand as much. After school, she barely said a word to Connor while they walked home. All of those things are very atypical for Alex, aren't they? Very different from her typical personality traits. And as soon as they got home, Alex would run up the stairs and lock herself in her bedroom for the rest of the day. Are you feeling okay? Connor eventually asked her. You seem different. Yes, I'm just tired, Alex said. Connor knew she must be tired because she didn't seem to sleep anymore. Every time he had gotten up in the middle of the night to get a glass of water or to use the bathroom that week, the lights in his sister's bedroom were still on and he could hear her rustling about inside working on something. He didn't have to be a genius to know that his sister was dealing with more than just insomnia. You guys know what insomnia is? Think about Alex's character trait right now. He said he's getting up to go to the bathroom uh, to get a drink of water and her light's still on. So insomnia probably means you can't what? Yeah, you can't sleep. He had seen enough health videos at school to know girls his sister's age were expected to go through mood swings and changes. But Alex had become another person entirely. Something very serious was bothering her and she was keeping it to herself. Can I borrow your pencil? A wide-eyed a wide-eyed and wide awake Alex asked him late one night. It was like a peacock asking to borrow some feathers. He was, wasn't certain how to handle the request. Surely she wasn't still doing homework at this hour. Don't you have like hundreds? Connor asked her. Yes, but I've lost all of them, she said. He shared a few that he had with her. Alex took them and quickly disappeared into her room again. She didn't even seem to mind that they were chewed on or missing erasers. The next night, Connor kept waking up to a peculiar humming sound from Alex's room. And we've talked about peculiar before, haven't we? It means what? A peculiar sound. Yeah, it's strange. It was quiet, but had a strong vibration that he could feel as much as he could hear. Alex? Connor said, knocking on his sister's door. What's that sound? I'm trying to sleep and it's driving me crazy. It, it's just a bee. I, I, I shoot him out the window. A frantic Alex responded behind the door. A bee. Does that sound logical? A bee? A puzzle Connor asked. Yeah, a, a very big bee. And it's mating season, you know, so they're quite aggressive this time of year. Alex called out. Uh, all right, Connor said and went to bed. But these happenings were nothing compared to the events during the next day at school. Can anyone tell me the names of the rivers that ran through ancient Mesopotamia? Miss Peters asked the class during a history lesson. As usual, she had no volunteers. Anyone? Miss Peters asked. Alex was looking... Everyone was looking at Alex and expecting her hand to shoot into the air any second. But Alex was just staring at the floor. She wasn't paying attention to anything. The Tigris and the Euphrates, Miss Peters informed the class. Can anyone tell me what the area between these two rivers is believed to be? She asked the question in Alex's direction. But it was no use. Alex was lost in her own thoughts. Miss Bailey? Perhaps you know the answer, Miss Peters pleaded. To what? Alex said, snapping out of her trance. To the question, Miss Peters said. Oh, Alex said. No, I don't. She rested her head on her hand and continued staring at the floor. 
Miss Peters and the rest of the class didn't understand what was happening. Anyway, all, sorry, Alex always knew the answers. How was the class going to function without her? The cradle of civilization, Miss Peters told the class, answering the question. Many believe that mankind started there. Miss Bailey! Alex sat up quick in her chair. The most shocking thing that had ever happened in the classroom had just occurred. Alex Bailey had dozed off in the middle of class. Now we would expect some snoring out of Connor, right? But Alex? Something, something's going crazy, right? That's not like her. Uh, I'm so sorry, Miss Peters, Alex pleaded. I don't know what came over me. I haven't been sleeping well lately. Miss Peters was staring at her as if she had just witnessed a gruesome rural animal give birth. That, that, that's, all, that's all right, the teacher said. Do you need to go see the nurse? No, I'm fine. I'm just a little sleepy, Alex said. I promise that'll never happen again. Connor had been watching the whole thing like it was a train wreck. All he could do was shake his head. What had happened to Alex? Where was his real sister? Was she turning into him? The strange humming sound Connor heard at the night before suddenly filled the classroom. Alex sat straight up in her seat, anxiety in her eyes. Her eye, an sorry, anxious, her eyes grew larger than they had ever been before. A few of the other students looked around, trying to figure out where the sound was coming from. Can anyone tell me the technologies Mesopotamia brought to the Bronze Ages? Miss Peters asked, oblivious to the humming. Anyone? She said again. Alex's hand shot into the air. Yes, Miss Bailey. Miss Peters happily called on her. May I use the restroom? <laughs> Teacher's worst nightmare, right? Alex peeped. Miss Peters sighed with disappointment. Ugh, yes, you may, she replied. Before she had finished granting Alex permission to leave the classroom, Alex had already jumped out of her seat, grabbed her school bag, and headed out the door. Connor watched his sister leave. His eyes were bulging with suspicion. Why had she taken her backpack with her to the bathroom? He had to know what was going on. He was going to confront his sister here and now at school, where she had no place to run and no bedroom to lock herself into. Miss Peters, Connor called out. Yes, Mr. Bailey. Miss Miss Peters asked. Can I see the nurse? He asked. What for? She asked. He hadn't thought this far into the plan. Um, my, my elbow hurts, Connor said. Miss Peters stared, stared blankly at him. She may have believed him more if he had told her he was a dinosaur. Your elbow hurts, she asked. Yeah. Really bad. I banged it on my desk and now it's just killing me, Connor said, clutching his perfectly fine elbow. Miss Peters squinted and rolled her eyes, two of her trademark indications of annoyance in one expression. <sighs> fine, the teacher said, but I'm going to have to write you a pass. Connor was out the door before she could finish her sentence. Meanwhile, Alex burst into the girl's restroom. She quickly looked underneath all the stalls to make sure she was alone. She zipped open her school bag and pulled out the Lena stories and set it on top of a sink. It was glowing and humming more than ever. Turn it off. Please turn off, Alex said at her book, to her book. I'm at school. I can't get caught with you here. Where'd they get this Lena stories book? Do you remember? Yeah, Grandma gave it to him for their birthday, right? The sound and shine slowly faded and the Lena stories returned to just being a normal book. Alex sighed with relief, but panicked once more when someone else suddenly charged inside the restroom. Who is it? It was her brother. Bees don't have mating seasons, Alex. Connor said with a tight, a tightened brow and a hand on his hip. I looked it up. They come from colonies just like ants, even, even the big ones, and they don't have schedules. Connor, what are you doing in here? You can't be in the girl's bathroom, Alex shouted. I'm not leaving until you tell me what's going on, Connor demanded. You've been lying to me all week, and I know something's up. I have twin tuition. Twin tuition, Alex said sarcastically. I made it up, Connor said. It means I know when something's bothering you, even if you tell me nothing is. At first, I thought you were just having... 
girl issues. Oh, Connor, please, Alex interjected. Then, after all the strange buzzing noises and the late nights, I figured mom must have gotten you a cell phone and didn't want me to know about it. But then I remembered, you have no friends. So who would be calling and texting you? Was that very nice? Not very nice, was it? Alex grunted. Now he was being accusative and rude. But I know you well enough to know that it would take something much worse to make you act this way. Connor said, you're quiet. You don't know any of Miss Peters' answers and you're falling asleep in class. You're acting like me. So just tell me, what's your problem? Alex didn't say a word. She just stared at her feet. She was so ashamed of how she'd been acting and she knew no one would believe her if she told them any, it told them why she had been acting the way, except maybe her brother. Connor looked around the girls' bathroom. Gosh, it's so nice in here. The boys' bathroom looks like a bottom of a hazard, hazardous waste barrel. Figurative of language compared the boys' bathroom to the bottom of a hazardous, hazardous waste barrel. Comparing two things you do like her as is a what? A simile, good. Wait, why do you have Grimmel's book with you? I don't know what's going on. Alex burst out into the loud and awkward tears and cries when only when exhausted and overly stressed. Connor took a step back for his own protection. He had never seen her so hysterical. At first, I thought I was hallucinating, Alex said. I thought maybe I was having a reaction to something Grandma made us for dinner. That was the first night it happened, but then it kept happening. So I knew it wasn't a reaction. Alex, what are you talking about? Connor asked. The Land of Stories book, Alex yelled. It glows, it hums. Every day it gets louder and brighter. I've lost so much sleep trying to figure out how and why it does it. It breaks all the laws of science. Uh, Connor raised his eyebrows. Alex, I think we should see the nurse. You must think I'm insane, Alex told him. Anyone would come to that conclusion unless they saw it for themselves. But I promise, I promise I'm telling the truth. I don't think you're insane, Connor lied, starting to think his sister was definitely going insane. It happens once or twice a day, Alex said. I was afraid mom would find it, so I brought it to school. The last thing she needs to worry about is a possessed book lying around her house. Connor didn't know what to say. He briefly imagined the future trips he and his mom would take to see his sister in the local asylum and the wisecracks he would make about the cool white jacket she got to wear. Clearly his sister had lost her mind, but after all they'd been through, he couldn't blame her. He kept thinking about how his dad would handle the situation. What story would he use to comfort Alex? Alex, Connor said with understanding eyes, we've been through a lot last, in the last year and it's perfectly normal to feel overwhelmed and the humming started again. They looked back at the land of stories on the sink. To Alex's relief and Connor's horror, it was glowing. Connor jumped back against the wall as if he were in the presence of an explosive. The land, the land of stories book, Connor yelled. It glows, it hums. I told you, Alex said. Connor's mouth was so open so wide, it was almost touching his chest. Is it radioactive, he asked. I doubt it, Alex told him. She reached for the book. Don't touch it, Alex, Connor shouted. him. Relax, Connor, Alex assured him. I've been dealing with it all week. <clears throat> Using one finger to flick the book open and the entire, the entire restroom was illuminated. All the illustrations and writings had disappeared and the page just seemed to be made out of pure light. Alex leaned closer to the book. Listen, do you hear that? She asked. I can hear birds and leaves. I've never heard sound come out of it before. Connor edged away from the wall and leaned down with the sister. The sounds of birds chirping and trees blowing in the wind echoed off the tile and porcelain in the bathroom. How is that possible? Connor asked. Are you sure it doesn't have batteries or something? My most educated analysis with all means of science and technology in mind is that it's magic, Alex said. There's no other possible explanation. Do you think grandma knows about this? Connor asked. She had the book for years before she gave it to us. Do you think it's happened before? I don't think Grandma would have given it to us if she knew what it was capable of, Alex said. He, he, yeah, you're right, Connor said. She still cuts up my meat for me when she comes to dinner because she doesn't trust me with knives. There's more, Alex said. She reached into her school bag and pulled out a pencil. Carefully, she placed the pencil on the, on the open book. 
it quickly sank into the glowing page and disappeared. Where did it go? Connor sputtered in utter astonishment. I don't know, Alex said. I've been dropping things into it all week. Pencils, books, dirty socks, anything I could, anything else I could find that I knew I wouldn't miss. I think it may be some kind of portal. A portal to what? Connor asked. Alex didn't have an answer. Of course, there was one location that she hoped it might lead to. The twins leaped down, even leaned down even closer to their book with their noses almost touching it, and they had to squint because it was so bright. Suddenly, a bright red bird flew out of the book. <laughs> what? A bright red bird flew out of the book? The twins screamed and ran around the room in panic. They bumped into each other, into the walls, and into the sinks as the bird zoomed above them. It was just as panicked as they were. Finally, Connor opened the bathroom door and the bird flew out of the room and into the world. You didn't say things came out of it, too, Connor yelled. I didn't know. That's the first time that's ever happened, Alex yelled back at him. The book slowly dimmed and returned to normal. Connor's head was spinning. He couldn't believe all the things he just witnessed. No wonder Alex was having such a rough week. Now he felt his own sanity might be slipping, too. We have to get rid of this book, Connor exclaimed. After school, we should ride our bikes down to the creek and toss it so no one ever finds it. We can't get rid of it, Alex said. It's Grandma's book. It's been in our family forever. Birds are flying out of it, Alex. I'm sure she'll understand, he said. What if a lion or a shark comes out of it next? I know it drives you crazy when you don't know about stuff, but this is one matter you need to let go. It could be more dangerous than we think. Who knows what could happen? She knew her brother was right. But there was something to think, something about the whole situation that intrigued her past the point of reason. I think you're overreacting, Alex said. I don't want to get rid of, the, rid of it until I know more about it. She closed the book and put it back in her school bag and walked out of the restroom. Alex, don't walk away. Alex, Connor called out after her. The twins returned to class. All the students were silently reading in their history books. Alex, we need to talk, Connor whispered. Mr. and Mrs. Bailey, please have a seat and read the chapter on Mesopotamia, Miss Peters ordered from her desk. Yes, Miss Peters, Alex said, and then turned back to her brother and whispered, we'll talk about this later, Connor. Connor let out a similar sound as something a bear would make. Mr. Bailey, how was the nurse? Miss Peters asked. There was no need. My elbow started feeling much better before I got there, Connor said, holding the other elbow than he had previously claimed was hurting. Miss Peters raised her eyebrows so high it was almost above her. The twins sat at their desk and opened their history books, but neither of them could actually read. Their thoughts were so loud, it was impossible to focus on anything. Connor kept looking up at his sister, hoping she'd turn around so she could make some sort of gesture to make her understand how serious the situation was. Alex could feel her brother's eyes on the back of her head, so she re remained facing forward, set on, set on ignoring him. And then the worst possible things that could ha that could have happened, happened. The land of stories, what do you think? Began humming in the quiet classroom from inside Alex's bag. She looked back at her brother, finally making eye contact. What were they going to do? Miss Peters had been so caught up with her lesson plan that she hadn't heard it earlier. Was it possible for her to miss it again? What's that noise? Miss Peters demanded. All of the students were looking around the room, wondering the same thing. Alex and Connor were terrified. They felt like their stomachs had fallen out of their bodies. Miss Peters got up from her desk and started searching around the room like a coyote sniffing out its prey. She walked down the aisles of desks, getting closer and closer to Alex. If anyone knows what that is, they better tell me before I find it, the teacher warned. Alex could feel her heartbeat in her throat. There was no telling what could happen if her teacher found the book. She could only imagine what a fuss school would make over the discovery. Perhaps they call the local news stations. Perhaps the government officials would take the book away for experimental testing. Perhaps her family would be taken away because it had been, they had been in such close contact with it. Miss Peters arrived at Alex's desk. Miss Bailey, is there something in your bag? She asked. All the color in Alex's face drained away. She needed the miracle. Suddenly... A large history book flew from the back of the classroom and hit Miss Peters in the head. Can you imagine your teacher getting whapped in the back of the head with a book in class? That's some big trouble, isn't it? 
leaving a large dent in her curly hair. The entire class turned to the back of the room and saw Connor's hand extended. He had just thrown a book at their teacher. Miss Peters' face turned bright red. A charging bull would have seemed harmless compared to the way she was looking at Connor. Mr. Bailey, what on earth has gotten into you? She said. I'm sorry, she screamed. The whole school must have heard her. For a brief moment, Connor saw his entire life flash before his eyes. He honestly thought he was about to die. His face was so white he was almost transparent. I, I'm sorry, Miss Peters, Connor whimpered. There was a bee and I didn't mean to hit you. He lied. Steam was practically coming out of the teacher's ears and nostrils. Detention, Mr. Bailey, for the rest of the week, next week, and the week after, Miss Peters said. She returned to her desk and immediately began filling out every detention slip she had in her possession. Thankfully, the room had become so tense that everyone had forgotten about the humming sound. And even more thankfully, they hadn't noticed it slowly fade away. Connor's mission was accomplished. He knew he'd done the right thing, not as a student, but as a brother. Soon the bell rang and all of the students left their desks and filed out of the classroom, except for Connor, who remained seated. Alex walked up to him. Thanks for that, she said. You owe me one, Connor told her. She nodded and left the classroom to walk home alone. Connor remained seated until Miss Peters finished filling out detention slips. Come here, Mr. Bailey, she said. Connor approached the desk as if it were on fire. Throwing things in my classroom will never be tolerated. Do you understand me, Mr. Bailey? She said, heavily pronouncing each syllable of each word. One more incident like that, and I will have you expelled. He gulped and nodded, shaking his, his he, She handed him a large stack of detention slips. Your mother will need to sign all of these, Miss Peters told him. He nodded again. Ah, I'm sorry, Connor said. I hope I didn't hurt you. He was so genuine that even Miss Peters could see his regret. She knew that deep down, Connor had always been a good kid. A horrible student, but a good kid, nonetheless. It's all right, Mr. Bailey, she said. I believe I may have underestimated the effect your family situation has had on you and your sister. I'm going to contact your mother with a list of different after-school programs that I think you and your sister should take part in, as well as a list of self-help books that may be beneficial. Connor nodded in agreement. I think if you had... I think if... You had some place to escape to once in a while and help you deal with whatever you were going through, she said. Connor continued nodding. nodding. If there were, was ever a time in his life when he needed an escape from reality, it was now, and he was sure his sister would agree. And then, like lightning, the thought hit him. Oh my gosh, Alex, Connor thought. She's going to travel through the book herself. That's why she's been holding on to it. That's why she refused to get rid of it. Connor dropped all the detention slips and bolted towards the door. I'm sorry, Miss Peters. I can't go to detention today. Something's just come up. Mr. Bailey, get back here right now. She yelled after him, but it was too late. He was already gone. Connor was running as fast as he could down the street. Alex had gotten so much of a head start that he would make... Had Alex gotten so much of a head start, would he make it home in time to stop her? What if she was already gone by the time he got there? What if he never saw her again? His feet began to ache, a horrible pain grew in his side. His heart felt like it was beating out of his chest, but he continued running. He just prayed he wasn't too late. An apple means a new, what? New setting. It hadn't been more than five minutes since Alex had gotten home when, when the land of stories began acting up again. She ran upstairs in her bedroom and promptly shut the door behind her. Alex took the land of stories out of her school bag and placed it on her bedroom floor. She opened the cover and... to. She opened the cover and her room lit up from its golden glow. She smiled to herself. Alex had always hoped something magical would happen to her. And, some, and now something finally was. She pulled out a pencil from her school bag and placed it on top of the book and watched it disappear. Alex looked around the room for other disposable things that she could drop into the book. She was out of pencils and books. And the books left on her bookshelf were the ones she wanted to keep. She looked down at her school bag. She did have plenty of... She'd have plenty of school bags. She placed the whole bag on top of the book and watched as it too slowly sank into the storybook. Where were all these things going? Was it transporting them to another part of the world? Would she find a pile of school supplies in India or China? Or did the book send items someplace else entirely? Was it possible that they were going to end up in another world? Was the world 
Was it the world that Alex had secretly hoped? There was only one way to find out. Uh oh. It was an idea she managed to suppress all week. What if she went into the book? No, she couldn't possibly do such a stupid thing. What if she never came out? But what if she stuck her hand into the book? What would happen next? Would it hurt? Would her whole arm disappear? Alex's curiosity overruled her caution. She sat on her knees and bent over the book very carefully. Alex started with just her fingertips. So far, so good. There was no pain. She only felt a warm, tingly sensation. Alex reached further, and she was wrist deep now. She had not, nothing had happened that had worried, that worried her. She went further, the book up to her elbow now. If the book hadn't been there, her hand would be surely sticking out through the ceiling downstairs. Alex leaned forward even farther, almost shoulder deep into the book. She was moving her arm around, seeing if there was anything to grab on inside of it. Suddenly, her bedroom door burst open and Connor ran inside, sweating out of breath. <sighs> Alex, don't do it! He completely startled her. Alex lost balance and fell head first into the book. Alex! Connor cried to his sister. He jumped to the ground trying to grab her foot before she disappeared entirely. But it was too late. Alex had fallen into the land of stories. So tomorrow we're on chapter five from the mouth of a frog. I'm excited to hear what happens next, aren't you? Stay tuned, can't wait to read to you again. Love you, bye.